Starting in the mid-20th century, humanity has explored space faster than ever before. We've launched satellites, telescopes, space stations, and spacecraft, all strapped to rocket-propelled launch vehicles that helped them breach our atmosphere. And like everything else, the world's rockets saw considerable modifications over time. It began tiny and increased in size along with its capabilities and power. Even Starship, SpaceX's flagship, is no exception. According to CEO Elon Musk, SpaceX's mega-rocket Starship, which when fully assembled, stands 120 meters tall, and it'll grow even bigger. Specifically, the rocket's height will increase by 5 to 10 meters when the company scales its production. Musk made the revelation while replying to a tweet featuring a comparison picture of the rockets of the world. While no rocket is close to Starship in terms of size, the second spot is still occupied by the Saturn V rocket, which stood 111 meters tall and was used during NASA's Apollo missions nearly five decades ago. NASA's new SLS rocket, which has been developed with upgraded hardware of the rockets from the Apollo and Space Shuttle programs, is currently the tallest finished rocket. Standing 98 meters at its smallest, the SLS rocket comes in six configurations. Comes in six configurations with varying heights. Interestingly enough, the SLS Block 1 crew, which is the first of the six configurations and launching the Artemis 1 mission, is capable of generating 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust, which is 15% greater than Saturn V. On the other hand, Starship's Super Heavy Booster, which is equipped with 33 massive Raptor engines, would alone produce 17 million pounds of thrust. The upper stage ship, on the other hand, which has six Raptor engines, could generate 3.2 million pounds of thrust, according to SpaceX. With a total height of 120 meters, the booster occupies 69 meters of the number as opposed to the ship which stands at 50 meters tall. As for its payload capacity, the Starship could carry over 230 tons of cargo to space, whereas the SLS rocket's capacity ranges from 27 to 46 tons. Thus, SpaceX's Starship is still its best rocket development to date, and it is because the spacecraft aims to endure a long-haul journey that would bring round-trip missions and a reusable vessel, many private companies already recognize the Starship as a vehicle that would fulfill future missions to space, already seeing growth in private customers that would use it. The only thing left for SpaceX now is to see a significant test launch that would determine if the Starship is ready for its many missions to carry different technologies to space and soon venture to Mars. Musk previously claimed that a successful orbital launch might take place sometime around 1 to 12 months from early August. People would have to wait on Starship success before any missions take place, ensuring a readily available spacecraft for its use. In the past weeks, SpaceX conducted static fire tests on both the Starship 24 and Booster 7, the intended duo to go for the first orbital flight test since SpaceX retired 420 back in March. On the other hand, in Florida, SpaceX has just completed the erection of the Starship Launch Integration Tower, also known as Mechazilla, at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station Launch Complex 39A. SpaceX has been using LC-39A for Falcon 9 flights for a long time now, and the same launch area will be used for Starship space flights in the future. The next steps to complete the tower will be the installation of the quick disconnect arm and the chopsticks. The completion of the Starship launch integration tower in Florida might take a few weeks to a few months, depending on the pace of work SpaceX is able to continue at this location. With the experience of erecting and integrating Mechazilla towers at Starbase previously, SpaceX should be able to smoothly carry out the same operations here in Florida. Back at Starbase, SpaceX performed a static fire test on Starship 24 last week on September 8th with all of its six engines installed. According to SpaceX, the test was completed successfully, but this time the grass around the launch pad area caught fire due to the Starship 24 static fire test. Local observers believe that plastic and other material parts ejecting from the launch pad during the static fire test are the sources of the burning grass in the surrounding area. Let's take a look at what happened in the following footage. 
After the Starship 24 static fire test, SpaceX conducted a many engines spin prime test on the Super Heavy. This is one big step closer to the big static fire test with a record number of Raptor 2 engines. SpaceX has 12 hour test windows tentatively scheduled on September 19th and the 20th. If Booster 7 and the positions of the stars happen to be in the right mood between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. CDT. Once this testing is completed and any issues found fixed, Starship will be moved to the next round of testing, which will involve stacking Ship 24 on top of Booster 7 for combined tests. This could include launch countdown simulations, an eventual full-up countdown, and a 33-engine static fire test. SpaceX expects to complete this by the middle of next month and clear both vehicles for launch shortly after. However, as we've seen over the past several weeks, any problems that arise during this rigorous test campaign might very well result in a delay. That means that it's possible Starship's fateful launch will slip till later into the year or even into next year. But it is worth noting that Musk and SpaceX still have some backup options. B7's successor, Booster 8, is now nearly ready for engineless proof testing. Interestingly enough, its vehicle pair, Ship 25, was also fully stacked on September 12th, completing the primary structure of this ship. If SpaceX wants to switch to Duo 258 in case 247 has some major problems or simply hopes to be able to quickly launch Ship 25 and Booster 8 shortly after its first orbital flight, most likely we would see Ship 25 heading to the launch site for testing in the not-too-distant future. But the construction frenzy doesn't end there either. Booster 9 continues stacking in the Mega Bay as well. While its liquid methane tank was completed a few weeks ago, stacking is now at the halfway point for its liquid oxygen tank. Its partner, Ship 25, is also being assembled. Tent 3 shows likely S26, 27, and 28 nose cones. No clue as to what order these are shown here, but it's a high probability of a definite possibility that that is what they are. Some parts of Ship 29 also appeared. Moreover, we just got more dome news. Here's what's thought to be the first observed piece of S30. We also spotted Booster 12's aft dome. Their manufacturing rate is truly unbelievable. It's amazing. Huge thanks to Kevin Randall for sharing these amazing updates. In short, SpaceX has a lot of options, and Musk has remained upbeat about the trip happening this year. But we're just going to have to wait. That's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.